What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and today I'm going to show you guys how to replace the thermal pads on the Zotac RTX 3090 Trinity model. Now, I do also have a Zotac RTX 3090 amp hollow edition that we can do a thermal pad replacement on for you guys as well just let me know in the comment section below if you would find that helpful but first here's a word from our sponsor today's sponsor is not a sponsor it's a partnership with gamer subs have you guys noticed that i've been getting swole getting swole well, to keep up my energy for those workouts and those jujitsu sessions i have been supplementing with gamer subs with flavors like guacamole gamer Fart 9000, boom, right there. Or more traditional flavors like Akai Blueberry. Before I was allowed to take them on as a partner, I had to get all the ingredients approved by Mama Bear over here at Son of a Tech, who has approved the ingredients outside of some of the food coloring issues. But, uh, you know, we'll leave that up to you. The rest of the ingredients are organic and seem to be pretty clean. So there you go. That is the rundown on GamerSups. Use, of course, our affiliate code SOAT, S-O-A-T, at purchase to, of course, get a kickback. And in addition to that, if you purchase with Bitcoin, you can get a Bitcoin shaker. It looks like this, but it says Bitcoin on it, and mine should be in this week. So tune back into the channel, take a look, and see what that looks like. Enjoy the rest of the video, and definitely help support me. I only get a kickback if you purchase a tub, and if you purchase a tub with crypto, you can get a cool Bitcoin shaker. Welcome back. So if you guys aren't aware, essentially you can purchase the RTX 3090 Zotac models for a little bit cheaper than other models. This also goes for the Gigabyte models as well. And the primary reasoning for this is because their performance is not as high as some of the other models. Now, as a whole, the 3000 series has been pretty poor as far as third party manufacturers or third party board manufacturers essentially and their designs for the coolers on all of these. The primary issue being especially on the RTX 3090 is that the, the memory modules are not only on the front surrounding the core uh, and basically those are cooled by the heat sink uh, that also cools the core but there are also memory modules on the back side of the card. And this is something new that a lot of different third-party board manufacturers haven't experienced in the past. Unfortunately, I feel like an engineer should have caught this right away and said, yo, there's something wrong here. It gets even worse in the case of the Zotac Amp Hollow Edition, where they used a plastic backplate, meaning that you can't dissipate any heat through the backplate any, anymore. I don't know. That being said, we do have the Trinity models, which are metal, which metal backplates, which do help out here in this particular case. And the only thing that we really need to do from there is get something that is going to dissipate the heat quicker than, than the pre-installed thermal pads. So what we were looking for is basically the, the most efficient thermal pads that you can purchase, which right now are going to be the G-Lid thermal pads that have the 15 watt dissipation. So I'll leave a link to those down in the description below. We also used G-Lid Extreme Thermal Paste as well on these particular GPUs because my assumption is while that thermal paste does degrade a little bit quicker, we are going to be in on those cards, cleaning them up and reapplying thermal pads quite frequently to keep them hashing at the most hash rate that they can. How can you tell if you have a 3090 that is suffering from thermal throttling on the memory modules? Well, just by the fact of owning a 3090, more than likely they are thermal throttling. But when does thermal throttling kick in at 110 C? Yes, 110 C is within range of performance. So if you reach out to get something RMA, they're going to tell you that's within range. The thing that they don't tell you is as soon as the temperature goes above 110 C, the memory is downclocked and throttled to maintain that 110 C, meaning you're giving up performance because otherwise it would get hotter. 
Now, in this particular case, I was able to show before we did this work that the Zotac GPU in particular was going above that to 112C and significantly throttling. So when we were mining in Hive OS, after some time, we would have the hash rates on these cards drop all the way down into the 70s in one case, in the Amp Hollow Edition case, and down into the 80s and 90s on the Trinity case. So let's talk about installing thermal pads on the Trinity GPU. This is pretty straightforward. You should get some sort of small screwdriver kit. You can get one that's a little bit cheaper, but I still recommend the iFixit toolkit just because it's so convenient and it has everything you would need for almost all electronics. So I love it. I'll leave a link down below for the Amazon affiliate link for that. You'll need the thermal pads that we discussed, the G-Lid thermal pads, 15 watt that we'll link down below. Two millimeters is all you need for these GPUs. There's no other sizes. And then, of course, you're gonna need the thermal paste, which we'll leave down below, and some scissors. Check the comment or the description down below for all of the parts. Let's hop into it. So first, you're gonna to need to remove six screws from the back, starting with the back plate screws that are near the back of the GPU, uh, furthest away from the I.O. ports. Remove those two screws first and then break loose the screws on the core heat sink and basically do that in a cross pattern just to make sure you're not putting any uneven pressure on the chip itself and then continue to remove those four screws. At this point, you can pry the cooler from the PCB being as careful and gentle as possible. You can always use one of the past plastic pry tools from the iFixit toolkit, being very careful to make sure that you have a good leverage point that's not gonna break anything or putting any pressure on any points that may damage the card. Just to be safe, just so you guys know. It can take a little pressure because you do have the thermal paste and the thermal pads being super sticky in this particular case. Once you have that apart, you're gonna flip the card side by side and you will, uh, removing the cooler, and you will need to remove, of course, all of the power adapters. You have RGB, two of them, and a couple fan connectors as well. So there's plenty of connectors to remove here, I believe three in total, so that may take you a little time. And just be very careful because if you go too quickly, you can either, you know, pull a wire out or something along those lines. And then you're going to be, uh, you know, up a creek without a paddle sort of thing. All right. So once you have the cooler fully removed from the PCB, it's time to get the back plate off. There's going to be six screws in this particular case to get the back plate off and you'll need to use one of the small screwdriver tips from the iFixit toolkit and just remove those and it really doesn't matter you don't need a cross pattern because it's not necessarily putting any pressure anywhere uh, unreasonably there and the thermal pads in this case are pretty soft and then you're going to remove the back plate once you've removed those screws now once you've removed the back plate you're going to want to clean off and remove any leftover thermal pads from the stock placement of the thermal pads and then you are going to want to reinstall or install the new two millimeter thermal pads from GLED by cutting them to size and placing them over the black memory modules on the back that the original thermal pads were placed over. Now at this point you will want to reinstall the back plate by putting the back plate on, lining up the holes, flipping it over and screwing the six screws back in. At this point, you're ready to clean up the thermal pads and thermal paste off of the memory modules from the front side. And of course the thermal paste from the core itself, as well as any thermal pad residue or thermal paste residue from the heat sink itself as well. Making sure you clean all of that off and ready to go. You'll want to cut two millimeter thermal pads from the GLID thermal pads that you've purchased to size for the remaining memory modules. Place those on, place the thermal paste onto, of course, the die, and then reinstall the fan plugs. Now you can install the RGB plugs as well. This is really up to you. Now, while there isn't a huge power savings from removing the RGB, five to 10 watts 
possibly, maybe best case, right? And with efficiency, it's hard to even track exactly how much power savings you get off of it. You could leave them unplugged. In my case, I leave them unplugged because I don't need the RGB anyways. And if there's a possibility of saving power in a mining farm, I'm gonna take it. So I only plug the fans back in in this particular case. Once I have the fans plugged back in, then I'm going to place, of course, the cooler back on top of the card, making sure to line up the four screws or the four holes for the core and core heat sink. And then, of course, the two screws for the back plate portion. And then go ahead and start all four screws for, of course, the core or the heat sink. And then tightening in a crisscross pattern a couple turns at a time until all are tight, making sure that using the cross, the cross <laughs> method for screwing in the heat sink to keep even pressure across the die at all times. That's kind of the point behind it. Then you'll want to reinstall the two screws on the back side of the GPU and you should be good to go. So if you have any more questions about how this process works, let me know in the comments section below. Our results was taking the GPU down from 112C at its max to 102C at its max and mining at its full potential of 120 mega hash from the 80 mega hash that it was previously getting. We did this on three different Zotac cards and we'll cover the amp hollow in another video. I hope this was helpful and I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to see more. Also, you can check out this playlist for more content talking about cryptocurrency.